Ukraine advances inside Russia, Ukrainian forces have advanced 35 kilometers deep inside Russia. Uh, today, Ukrainian army controls 82 Russia's uh, settlements. It seems like Russia failed to effectively repel, repel Ukraine's offensive inside Russia. Also, Ukrainian army continues its uh, operations inside the uh, Kursk region, where it controls 82 Russia's settlements. Also, Ukraine has established a military administrative office in the Kursk region. Uh, it will help Ukraine to maintain law and order in this region and to meet the needs of the population in this area. Also, it would be important for Ukraine to sustain uh, humanitarian situation there and also it shows us that Russia does not control large area of the Kursk region and there is there has been information about uh, Ukraine's incursion inside Russia for 35 kilometers long inside the uh, Kursk region. Meanwhile, the US President Joe Biden is open to provide Ukraine with long-range GASSM uh, cruise missiles with a, with a range of 320 kilometers. This development uh, has been reported by uh, political and uh, if there is a such decision from the White House, Ukraine could uh, deploy these missiles against Russia's targets inside Russia and could target Bransk, Kursk, Voronezh and Belgorod. These regions and these cities would be under threat of the missile attacks if President Biden decides to provide Ukraine with such uh, missiles. Also, uh, the, White House now, the White House now is discussing the technical possibilities for Ukraine to deploy uh, such missiles for in the Air Force. Uh, it would be possible for the Ukrainian Air Force to use such missiles, GASSM missile, with uh, new, brand new F-16 jets, which have been already provided to Ukraine. Also, there are, are ongoing discussions between uh, the United States and Ukraine about this situation and the White House is considering how to provide Ukraine with such missiles and how to uh, help Ukraine to have the capability to deploy, to use these missiles uh, in Ukraine and also, for example, deep inside Russia. Uh, meanwhile, the Reuters uh, reports that the United States uh, does not have any kind of objections against uh, Ukraine's usage of uh, US-made weapons inside Russia. Uh, Sky News previously reported that uh, Ukraine has used the Challenger 2 tanks during its uh, offensive operation inside Russia, and according to Reuters, uh, the United States does not have any objections against it, and uh, Ukraine is doing it according to the U.S. government's policy. Also, uh, there have been some concerns that uh, how, so, how should the new U.S. policy regarding this Ukraine's incursion look like, because the United States was cut off the guard. The Americans did not expect such an attack because Ukraine has maintained high operational security and uh, also there have been information that uh, the United States uh, did not expect this and also uh, they tried to um, try to develop new kind of policy regarding this issue and uh, however they say that the movement of Ukrainian forces inside Russia does not contradict US policy regarding the uh, war in Ukraine. At the same time, the United States does not allow Ukraine to use attackums, long-range attackums missiles inside Russia to strike Russia's um, strategic military targets. Uh, this information has been reported by uh, media outlets, the US media outlets. Uh, Pentagon is confident that it would be more appropriate for Ukraine to use attackums against Russia's military tar targets inside Crimea, but not uh, inside the Russian territory uh, against Russia's strategic objective. However, President Zelensky is asking the United States to allow Ukraine to strike deep inside Russia and to use long-range attack missiles to destroy Russia's uh, military targets inside Russia in the uh, loss of Russia's region where they are deployed right now. Meanwhile, the commander-in-chief of the 
Armed Forces of NATO in Europe, General Christopher Cavoli revealed his opinion about Russia's failures uh, in repelling Ukraine's offensive inside Russia. Uh, General Cavoli said that Russia's reaction was slow and scattered, and uh, he described uh, many reasons why Russia has failed to repel Ukraine's offensive inside Russia. Uh, General Cavoli said that uh, there are some reasons of that. Firstly, there was a lack of understanding who was responsible who was responsible for repelling this attack inside Russia. Also, uh, there was a lack of the freed soldiers, a lack of strategic reserves which could be deployed to repel such attack from the Ukrainian side and uh, there uh, was lots of um, there have been lots of Russia's failures and also General Kavoli said that Russia still failed to still struggles to effectively repel Ukraine's offensive inside Russia uh, and Ukraine still continue its offensive operation uh, regarding the fact that Russia tried to repel this uh, this offensive deep inside Russia and uh, General Kavoli said that it was absolutely wonderful what Ukraine uh, was able to do with the help of uh, so many allies and uh, he expressed admiration of Ukraine's war effort and Ukraine's uh, war strategy. CNN also reported about possible redeployment of Russia's troops from the uh, other parts of regions of Ukraine to the Kursk region uh, several thousand military personnel were redeployed from the occupied territories to, of Ukraine to the Kursk region because Russia fails to effectively repel Ukraine's attack because it needs more trained soldiers. However, uh, most of the Russia's army is involved uh, in the offensive on the east of Ukraine. That's why President Biden said that there is a big dilemma uh, with Russian generals uh, have a big dilemma on how properly properly use use its resources and how properly tra transfer its troops and how properly uh, deploy its troops on the uh, all important areas of the front lines. Also, however, national security spokesman John Kirby said in an interview that uh, the movement of Russian troops from Ukraine does not mean that Putin has abandoned his military operations in the northeastern part of Ukraine or even in the south of Ukraine. This information has been reported by the US media outlets. Also, John Kirby said that uh, the United States haven't seen uh, yet uh, any kind of significant uh, movement of Russian troops uh, because they have still need time to, uh, to study this question and to get more details from the Ukrainian side of this war. Meanwhile, US Vice President Kamala Harris leads Donald Trump. He, she has a lead over Trump. According to the latest polls, latest poll has been conducted by Cook Political Report Swing State Project poll. And this poll shows that Kamala Harris has a lead over Donald Trump. Kamala Harris gets 84% of votes. Uh, and 84% of the support from American voters. At the same time, Donald Trump gets only 47% of the support from the voters. Uh, also, Harris narrowly leads Trump in five of seven key states, key for the victory states, and it seems like America, Harris is gaining ground in the support among American voters. Also, The Economist reported that Kamala Harris had more chances to beat, uh, had more chances to win this election rather than uh, Donald Trump. Also, according to the, uh, the Economist, uh, the general situation has changed and Kamala Harris today have 52% uh, chances to beat Donald Trump during, this, uh, during the general elections. And this information has been reported by the Economist provided its analysis of the recent polls and statements of both candidates of the U.S. Uh, general election. It's all for today. Subscribe for our, to our YouTube channel. Stay with us on YouTube and uh, glory to Ukraine.